Hey everyone, uh, thank you all for coming out today. Um, my name is Brett Demetrius, and um, Graham Gilbert needs no introduction. Um, we are part of the uh, systems engineering team at Airbnb. Um, before I kind of jump in, uh, it was kind of interesting if you all popped into the uh, the uh, data jar talk. They kind of hit on a, a note that we're going to hit on, right? And that is, they're trying to beat Max into people, right? And where they're trying to you know, say, hey, Mac is a great platform, um, and they're, you know, they have their own struggles and worries, but uh, but this this talk is the other way. Like, we have Macs, and we are trying to beat something else into you. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. But, uh, just so, getting started here, um, my first, uh, my first days at Airbnb were interesting, to say the least. Actually, quite scary and shocking. Um, I used to work for uh, education, school district. Um, we use we are Casper shop um, managed about twelve thousand Macs uh, and we were good at it. I thought I thought we were good at it. Um, so when I when I took the Airbnb job, I kind of said, "Hey, how many Macs do you guys have?" And they're like, "Well, we have about two thousand. And kind of kind of scoffed, kind of laughed a little bit. Um, but the interesting thing is when I when I showed up, uh, a lot of a, a, a huge plethora of problems kind of dropped on my lap, and that was because. At the school district, um, you kind of have the freedom to do what you want, right? Um, you can kind of just walk into a classroom, and no, you, no, no machine is owned by any any one user, right? So, um, at the company, though, all your machines are owned by a user, um, and that user cares about what they're doing, and they want to be productive in what they're doing. Um, so, like I said, we had a lot of problems, um, and there was no one really owning the platform. So it was kind of funny because we had this joke. It's like, oh my God, there is holes in this Swiss cheese, right? Like there's problems everywhere. Um, so we had to kind of figure out what to fix, right? Um, and well, we were a Mac shop. We gave everyone walking through the door a Mac. They didn't get a choice. Um, and so basically Mac, Mac OS was our only first class citizen, right? Um, we were a Casper shop, um, like I said, no one had been managing it previously, so that was my job now. Um, and another interesting bit that was kind of there um, was this unmanaged Windows VM. Uh, Windows 7, uh, I think probably it got deployed because, you know, our help desk was getting bombarded with, you know, requests for Windows and, you know, people need Excel. And I, this was before 2016, right? So, um, so they, I, I, I basically just ignored that, right? I said, great, that problem solved. Um, you know, move on. And so, and and honestly, when I started, like, there was really no concept of security. Like, we had security. Um, we tried to do security. Uh, but it really wasn't something that was, like, really, really at the top of our list uh, because we had so many other things to solve for. Um, and really, the issue with the with the Windows thing is that if you give a Windows machine, like an unmanaged Windows machine to a user, um, and you don't have the freedom like an EDU to like go into that classroom and like touch that machine again whenever you feel like, like that machine's gone, you know, it was basically gone. Like you don't have any reporting on it, you don't know where it is, you don't know what's installed on it. Um, and so that's a huge problem, right? So that's like a huge gap in security. Um, so, uh, oh my God, it's gonna load. <laughs> So basically, everything is awesome, right? We're managing Macs. We're doing what we want. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything <laughs> is awesome. We're going to go for like another 10 seconds. When we live in our dreams. Want to play out? <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, uh, so not so long ago, um, you know, I, uh, maybe this is only like maybe six, uh, six to eight, eight months later um, after I started, uh, I sit down to interview a security engineer for IT. Uh, you, you guys might know him, Sam Keeley. And so we sit down uh, and we say, you know, I let him know like what, are, what our problems are. And he says, well, um, you know, would, would you want to do monkey? And I said, yeah, it's something I've heard a lot about. Um, let's, let's do it, right? Uh, so you know, we basically stood monkey up, rolled it out. And what was interesting was once we started doing that, once we like got monkey rolled out, like we still had Casper um, and it still did most things, I guess, uh, in quotes. 
Um, but uh, Monkey did something really, really interesting for us, and that was that we started to break down like this huge thing that was Casper into like little bits and pieces of things that we wanted to like offer, right? Like a service. Um, and what was neat is once we started offering Monkey, um, we started basically say, hey, like, okay, we can, we can get your system patched within 24 hours. We can get your system patched within 48 hours versus like, we'll try and get your system patched at some point. Um, we got the added benefit of source control, right? Um, so that's really nice. Uh, the whole company uses Git or could use Git, uh, GitHub Enterprise. Um, so we got global visibility. Uh, people could see um, what was going on and back and forth, right? We had formal review processes bef before code was got before code got deployed. Um, and then other teams started, you know, coming in and saying like, oh, hey, you know, we do stuff on the platform. Like, would you? would you take care of it for us, right? And um, so yeah, so basically we started getting all of this like kind of cool like security for free, right? Um, <coughs> and then uh, basically the chaos started to subside a little bit um, and then carry on a few months into it, uh, we found this guy. All right, is it working? Can you hear me? Wonderful. Okay, so um, I turned up and we sat down. It was highly likely to be over a beer, if I don't remember. Um, and we decided what we needed to do. So at the highest levels, there are some things that we need from our computers. Our number one job as IT people is to make sure that Airbnb's information, our host and our wider community's information is kept secure. And once we've done that, our second job is to make sure our employees can actually get some work done. So um, I come along and we've ripped out our commercial stack and we've replaced it with an open source one. So we, our tool set ended up looking a lot like this. Um, it allows us to manage software effectively, maintain our config and source control, and also enables us to keep up with Apple's lunatic kanakazi run into MDM being our only management tool. Um, and we have, we have control over as much of our tool set as we possibly can at this point. Uh, it allows us to tweak it to meet our needs. So this is fine. We were happy in our little Mac-only bubble. And then one day we bought another company. I remember it clearly. It was early 2017, probably last week of January. Our PM just slides over and he casually just slips in. So guys, how do you feel about managing Windows? And this is me and Brett. I don't know who the lady is, but probably Sam. We'll go for that. He's the third person. <laughs> All right. So, um, right. So a Mac can do anything, right? It can even upload a virus to an alien spaceship. So just give them a Mac. We don't care. We don't want to do Windows. So we weren't set up to manage anything on Apple computers. Mac OS took up all of our time. And if we're being perfectly honest about this whole situation, we didn't want to do Windows. So we're basically a bit Allen on the whole subject, and I can spot the British people now. <laughs> yeah, I had an interesting conversation having to explain to Brett. Well, I didn't get it. I don't get it at all. I all still right. don't. <laughs> all right, but this company we bought were heavy Windows users, um, even down to their website being hosted wholly on Windows servers. And our finance people needed their financy software that didn't exist on Mac OS, or if it did exist, it was missing critical features for them. At this point, we were saying no a lot, and it felt funny, and I don't mean a good kind of funny. So one of Airbnb's core values is to be a host. This needs, means we need to be accommodating. We need to anticipate the needs of others, and we weren't doing this. So eventually it dawned on us. We need to support Windows. So let's yabba dabba do this. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we basically uh, pulled a Fred Flintstone here and uh, tore off our uh, regular clothes and got into our wrestling suit and got in the ring. Um, so basically, here's where the interesting stuff starts, right? 
like we know how to manage Mac OS, right? Um, and we do it pretty good uh, because we have an amazing tool set. We have an amazing community. Just take a look around. Um, we basically have the gold standard for patching a Mac OS system already. Uh, we use configuration management in this form of Puppet. Um, and we actually uh, hired the guy who wrote uh, the following two tools, right? Um, and then uh, we, we, we try and chip in on the, on the last one there. Um, so we know how to manage a Mac, and we know how to do it well. Uh, so how should we manage a PC? Well, probably the same, actually. Um, you know, we want the same qualities in our management tools to work for both platforms, right? Like, I don't want to have some like weird alien way to manage a Windows machine. I want to I want to use it like a Mac. Um, so you can see we had some gaps here, right? Um, <coughs> Monkey doesn't exist on Windows. Uh, I don't know anything about BitLocker. Do you? Um, reporting uh, does MDM exist for a Mac? I, I've been hearing rumors that it does. Um, so we were a bit in the dark, but we had one thing, and we had Puppet, because we knew Puppet's installer already works on Windows. Um, so we kind of just jumped right in there. Um, that was a start. And so basically, uh, we started looking at like what, what the first couple things you do when you take a Windows machine out of the, out of the box, right, is, um, I mean, the, the, the first couple things I do, at least, is uh, I want to connect to the internet so I can download all my stuff. Um, so, if you're on 802.1x, that might require you installing a certificate. So, like, probably the first thing that we need to take a look at is let's, like, get some basic stuff set up on Windows. Um, and so we took a look at how we did on a Mac. Um, so this is how we install a certificate on a Mac, right? Um, in Puppet, right? So we have a defined type um, uh, that takes three arguments, right? Um, a source, where can I get the physical certificate? Uh, the fingerprint of the certificate, right? So how do I know if it's changed or, you know, what it is? Um, and then we know as Mac admins um, that when a certificate installs on a Mac, its default trust level is uh, trusted root. Um, so basically the bottom is effectively, you know, what we would interact with um, on our day-to-day -to, -day to, to configure a cert, right? The, 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 the top is the provider and the, and the bottom is actually like, you know, you using it. Um, so how does that look on Windows? Uh, amazingly similar, actually. Um, so what we decided, so what we did was, um, you know, looked how it was on a Mac, and then just did a quick Google, uh, or look in the Puppet Forge, rather. Um, can I do this? And sure enough, yeah, you can. Um, so the Forge already has a Puppet authored uh, module for installing a certificate on Windows because it's actually really common. Um, Windows admins do stuff too. Uh, so if you look at it, right, um, it's exactly the same properties, right? Because you're not really managing the, m the operating system, right? You're managing a certificate. And the certificate only has a few properties. Uh, so it was kind of crazy. This was like kind of mind blowing, right? Um, they have the same implementation. Um, and what's kind of neat, it was what, what I actually uh, left in here, was that you didn't see in the in the in the Mac OS provider is that uh, the Windows provider actually takes a password argument, um, and I kind of scratched my head. But then I actually thought like, okay, well, on a Mac, if I was deploying a certificate like a PKCS12, like it would need a password, right? And so I started to see things like for what they were, rather than like what operating system they belong to, right? Um, and so, yeah, a certificate is a certificate. It doesn't change between operating system. Um, so here's where we kind of said, okay, we're going to stop offering the operating system. And we're gonna s we want to start offering the service, right? So I want to offer the certificate as a service. Um, so whatever, whatever machine comes by me, I just want to say, here you go. Cool. You can get on Wi-Fi now. Um, and... You know, circling back to Monkey, right? Monkey was, when, it, when we first implemented it at Airbnb, you know, we kind of said like, okay, well, let's break our service stack down into like individual problems and solve the problem with a specific tool. Um, but that goes one, one step further, actually. Um, so now, 
um, you want to basically break down what is monkey. Like monkey is, like I said, the gold standard for patching a Mac on Mac OS. Um, but effectively, like what is it, right? Um, it just, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely <laughs> screw this up, but uh, it, it's not my, my presenter notes. But I think like at the rudimentary level, like monkey is just saying, okay, like, hey, what's installed in the system? Does it need to be updated? And then it's gonna have some instruction for how to update that thing, right? So I want that exact same thing for Windows. Um, so yeah, it's basically shifting the paradigm from, you know, I managing the specific thing on the specific operating system to just like, I don't want the computer coming by me to care. I just want to have the back end that will support that. Um, so what is kind of next, right? Um, so we have like this, we can do a couple things with Puppet, uh, but we're still blind. And um, we still don't know what our clients are doing. But what's cool is that um, kind of without even trying, Graham built Sal to support other platforms. I did try. He did try. And this is a really old screenshot. We don't have 10.10.4 <laughs> machines. <laughs> and that. So, appar so apparently Graham did try. Um, maybe we just discovered it one day. Uh, but the neat thing about Sal is um, it's just a reporting engine, right? Like, it just reports the status of a computer. Computers are all the same. CPU, memory, hard drive, got some stuff installed on it. Um, so what does it take to get a Windows machine talking to Sal? Uh, well, actually, um, pretty easy. What's the properties of a certificate? What's the properties of patching? And what are the properties of a client sending information to a server, right? Uh, so, you know, PowerShell, gross, right? But eh, not that bad. Uh, you, but you, because you can, uh, you can just straight shell out, and if you're on PowerShell, like, two, someone correct me, 2.5, I think, introduced JSON, or it might have been 3.0. Um, that's okay, Windows 10 ships with 5 now. So, uh, we get the conversion to JSON, uh, which marshals really, really nicely into a ghost struct, um, and we do a post request. So basically, you know, that's it. We're just, now we're managing the properties of a post request, I guess. Um, so I wrote this thing. Um, it started out really crappy, and then some really smart people started to work on it. Um, apparently, you can just throw out garbage onto GitHub, and people will just be like, sweet, I'll let me help you with that, which is great. Um, speaks to how good the Mac community is, actually. Um, so the URL is there if you want to check it out. Um, and contribute, pull request accepted. Uh, I haven't cut a release yet. Um, still writing on a couple features. We use it in production. Um, you can, at your own risk, please. please. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what a ghost struct is either, so don't feel bad. Um, it's easy. All right, but um, we don't just have Macs and we don't just have PCs. We have a third OS, and that's Chrome OS. As you may have guessed, it's had Chromebook in front of me. Um, big secret. That's bloody important. You've done three presenter notes. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So why would we choose Chrome OS? I mean, well, there's no more imaging or provisioning. We just enroll them into our G Suite domain and they're ready to go. This r works really well with loaner laptops. So if you have a pool of laptops that you hand out on a temporary basis for whatever reason, having a machine where all modifications happen in the user space is really useful. We can just erase their user account and the laptop's ready to go out again. Uh, Chrome OS is also way more secure than anything else out there at the moment. It's always up to date, updates get installed automatically, and every Chromebook ships with verified boot. Um, Apple are only just catching up with this. So we know that the operating system has been tampered with. And finally, you can get a decent, and notice I said decent, not good, uh, Chromebook for a few hundred quid. If you want a good one, you're paying about this, you're getting a Pixelbook, and that's about the same as a MacBook Air. So you're not going to be saving money if you're looking at switching to Chrome OS and want your user to actually want to use the computer. Um, but what you will be getting is a device that is more secure than anything else we can offer our users. Um, it's painless to patch, 
we're talking 30 second OS updates here, not 30 minutes. So if you have people come to your help desk with a bricked map because they turned it off halfway through, you can say goodbye to that. And in fact, pixel books have become a little bit of a status symbol at work. Uh, people who have them, it shows that they've really thought about their workflow and see if they can fit into a way which will help keep our company more secure. But of course, Chrome's just a web browser, isn't it? You can't do anything outside of email, Google Docs, maybe reading a bit of Sky Sports at lunchtime. Um, El Presidente, thank you. You're wrong. So you can actually do quite a lot of the APIs that Google gives you. Um, you can accept URLs, you can run um, pretty much any JavaScript you want inside the sandbox. Um, you can even build what they call native extensions in C and C++. We can manage printers, we can create VPN connections, we can create other network connections, loads of stuff. So we've got these APIs we can use. What do we care about? We come back to this slide I copy and pasted. Um, the visibility problem. So G Suite Admin has a lot of information about the individual devices. Um, but this information isn't searchable or collatable. This means we have a lot of information about one device, but none about trends or averages. So to carry on with the theme, we made a Chrome extension that will report on a few things about the devices we have out there. Uh, this is clearly very early on, and we only know the bare basics here. But what we do have is application inventory for Chrome OS. The, our Android container is managed by MDM, so it's pretty restricted in what the users can install. Um, so, but, so extensions are the primary method that our users will customize their Chrome OS experience. So by utilizing Sal's existing application inventory, we are able to aggregate and search on who has which extensions installed. So this allows us to not only see if there are any malicious extensions installed out there, but we can also see which ones are installed on loads of our devices. So we can make our users a bit like our users' lives a bit easier by putting them in our company web store. So you can get the extension on the Chrome Web Store. The URL is horrible, so use that short one. Um, the source is up on GitHub if you wish to contribute or laugh at my terrible JavaScript in the theme of throwing terrible code out on the internet and seeing who will help us with it. Uh, the required pieces to get Chrome Cell working were added in Cell 3.3.0, which I released about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> and no one noticed. <laughs> so it shows that loads of people are watching that project. Um, all right, so our journey clearly isn't over here. Uh, Mac OS is basically a solved problem for us at the moment until Apple stuffs up something else. Um, but we're only scratching the surface with our other platforms. As Mac admins, you don't know how good you have it with Monkey. It's literally the best tool for managing software on any platform. Unfortunately, there isn't anything quite so nice on Windows. So you may think I'm being a bit flippant here, but um, We've done this um, when we have something really important to install. Uh, your help desk installing stuff by hand is certainly an option if you've only got a handful of machines. But in all seriousness, um, there are a few things we're actually looking at. In the short term, Chocolatey Enterprise offers all the basics. Um, there's something very similar to Auto Package for getting software into your repo, and a kind of a light version of Managed Software Center. Um, the developer's reasonably responsive, and it's clear they're taking inspiration from how Monkey works. And in my opinion, that's a really good thing. But um, speaking of Monkey, um, we really like how Monkey works. And we would really love to put our Git-based workflow to for managing software onto Windows as well as we do on Mac OS. Um, we have not written a single line of code for this. There's no uh, next big thing. But um, if anyone wants to help us with this, we'd really want to talk to you. So one of our other issues is that managing Chrome OS outside of extensions is entirely GUI-based. I know for some organizations this is seen as a benefit. For us, this is a positive disadvantage. Um, if it's not in Git, it doesn't exist. We would love to manage Chrome OS via um, config file scripts, some sort of declarative language. But we need Google to open up some the APIs, which clearly exist because other MDM vendors use them. Um, once this happens, we can start building out a framework so we can programmatically configure our Chrome devices. And we always want more information. On Windows, this will probably mean writing more facts for Puppet. Um, there are open PRs. Still open? Closed? Open. All right. Open PRs to add support to, for, to GoSouth for 
Chef's so high and salt grains for users of those tools. On the Chrome side, we want to hook up the G Suite API to Sal, so we can use information that's in G Suite and then search on it and collate it with the information we're collecting from the devices directly via the extension. And good job, this was really short because we only had half an hour. Um, so, anyone any questions? Can you hear me? Nope. Nope. <laughs> How the hell does this thing work? Look at it. Good? No? All right. Uh, I know you guys probably know this since we, you know, all from the same part of the country we talk, but uh, just as a open kind of th thing I'm throwing out there, uh, West and Ivert Square ran into the exact same problem that you guys are going to, right? And we're experiencing a lot of the same difficulties. Uh, chocolatey, definitely plus one. We uh, highly recommend it. I've pushed, I've been playing around with that for the last couple months. It's a really great tool. Uh, there's an open source variant, which I highly recommend you take a look at um, for anyone else as well. And we're using SaltSec opposed to Puppet, but virtually the methodology is the exact same as what you guys are doing Airbnb. So for any other groups that are trying to incorporate Windows and Chrome, I say take a look at those. Oh, and Intune for MDM stuff as a lightweight kind of way of bootstrapping. Yeah. Um, I guess just kind of a tan tangent to that. Um, so we run uh, Windows in a virtual machine on the Mac right now um, because we're not comfortable with, with running physical machines uh, because we haven't solved for BitLocker yet. Um, so that's our next thing. Um, so if you're thinking like, oh yeah, hey, I can just go get myself configuration management and install a crappy Go tool for talking to Sal, um, you probably think again. Um, just a word of caution. Anyone else? So clearly the perfect talk because no one has any questions. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, one last thing. Um, about three weeks ago, I was about to cancel this trip. I was diagnosed with a tumor. Um, fortunately, my sur surgery was successful and uh, unlucky for you, I'm going to recover. However, um, <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone is as lucky to catch it as early as I did. So um, I used to say that if you use my software, you find my blog useful, if you like my talks, buy me a beer. Um, I can obviously buy my own beer, I have a job. So if you find anything useful I put out, if you find anything useful I put out there, um, it would be lovely if you could find yourself from hitting this link and sticking your credit card number in. Um, like I said, a lot of people aren't as lucky as I am. All right, and now I'm done. Oh, and by the way, if you think we're wrong, because you probably do, as usual, you can just shout at us in the pub because we'll <laughs> definitely be there. <laughs> <laughs>